Let me give you a history lesson before I start this LP. Argonaut Games is a British game company founded in 1982, who originally made a few games for the Commodore 64 and the Atari ST. One of the most notable works is their contribution to the game Star Fox for the SNES. Dylan Cuthbert from Argonaut Games cooperated with Nintendo on the Super FX chip, something that allowed the Super Nintendo to display polygonal graphics. While only using a handful of games, the Super FX chip was used in other games such as Stunt Race FX, Doom, and Super Mario World 2 Yoshi Island. Eventually, Argonaut Games developed a game called Croc Legend of the Gobos. This game ran on a fancy new engine called the Blazing Renderer Engine, which allowed full 3D graphics, lighting, surround sound, and a bunch of other cool things. The engine was used mostly for Argonaut's games only, but it's also used in some others such as Carmageddon 2. Croc, while met with mixed reviews, sold enough copies to receive a platinum ranking on the PlayStation. In 1999, the company was floated, meaning it was losing a lot of money. In an attempt to save the company, many of Argonaut's later games were licensed games, such as The Emperor's New Groove, a game I've LP before. However, the debt was too great, and the company eventually met its fate in 2004. Until the website was bought in 2010, Argonaut.com consisted of a black page with the text, it was fun. However, the legacy still lives on. Dylan Cuthbert in 2001 founded a new company in Kyoto, Japan called Q Games. This company has made a series of games called the Pixel Junk series for the PlayStation Store, which are throwbacks to classic genres such as the side-scroller and the top-down racer. The company also co-developed both Star Fox Command and Star Fox 64 3D with Nintendo. So in the end, the company seems to have a bright future ahead. So what happened to Croc? Well, Croc was originally going to be a character in a kart racing game that Argonaut was developing, but it was decided to have its own platforming game instead. Croc Legend of the Gobos had a sequel called Croc 2, which basically just expanded on the base game, although not really addressing any of the problems, mostly the camera of the original game. The only other appearances of Croc were three games designed for old-timey mobile devices. So how come no more Croc games have been developed? The details are a bit vague, since besides Wikipedia, there's not really any information about the series, especially since Arsenal Games doesn't exist anymore. What I can assume is that the character is owned by Fox Interactive, who are the publishers, and not the developers. The only problem is, Fox Interactive was bought by Vivendi Universal in 2003, and the whole branch went bankrupt in 2006. So does Vivendi own the Croft license? Well actually, Vivendi merged with Activision to form Blizzard Activision in 2008, so technically they would own the rights to the Croc franchise. However, the chances of a reboot of the franchise is slim, considering that both the original developers and the publishers have become defunct. That being said, it's just a franchise. A Croc-styled game can always spawn up from somewhere, and there seems to be a fan base still around for this game. Perhaps the community can develop a new Croc-inspired game for the world. But without further ado, here is Croc, Legend of the Gobos. Oh my gosh, fireworks! Whoa. Hey guys, it's BNL and I'm starting a new LP. If you've been a fan of mine, you would kind of remember this logo. Argonaut, hmm. Well, Argonaut actually developed the game The Emperor's New Groove, which I kind of explained before, but, and runs on the same engine as this game. Why did I turn on my phone? Seriously. My phone is busted, I, I know. I'm getting a new one tomorrow, which is yesterday when I'm uploading this. Recording this on Wednesday, which is a very odd date. Um... But anyway, I'm starting an LP of Croc, The Legend of the Gobos. I might turn this up a bit. Um... You may be wondering, what exactly is this game? Why the heck am I playing it? And... That's about it. Well, first of all, I'll answer the second question. This was one of the first games I had ever gotten. The first game I had ever got, got, uh, played, though, was Super Mario Bros. Uh, but this was one of the early games I had actually gotten for PC, which is actually very strange, considering I was one year old when this game was made. And I think I got it in 98, so... Um... Now, this game required a, a ton of setup. It required a ton of setup to do. Um... Basically, what I was intending to do was I was intending to play the original PC version. I still have the disc, and there's still fan resources on the internet who, you know, have plenty... Like, there's still one forum with a bunch of people who still are into this game and want to unlock all its secrets and so create HD texture packs and all. Um, 
been a meticulous process for, for about 10 or so people, but still. Um, but it was such a pain. I'll get into that when I, uh, when I get into the game more or so. Um, but anyway, you can tell that it's a cartoony game. And it's it's going to be a platformer. It's a 3D platformer, and it is a very underrated game. It was very popular, though. It did sell sell quite well, but it it didn't meet quite high reviews. They got around a lot of sixes just because people found it too difficult, and they mostly blamed the controls. And I can see why they don't like the controls, but I can't blame... I, I can kind of yell at them for that. So anyway, this is Croc Legend of the Gobos. This is the PlayStation version, and this is the first time I've ever used a PlayStation emulator. For those who like emulators and want to keep the authenticity of it, basically what I, re what I recommend is that if you're going to be playing in higher resolution, like what I'm doing right now, don't try and stretch the graphics at all. We want to keep the aspect ratio, and you don't want to stretch textures or anything. So for the most part, all of this works well. I'm just showing the password, because in case if you're someone who watches, I'll show the password. Also, I have kept a secondary save game. So it uses both save and password. Um, which is actually kind of strange, but it's good for things like, um, you know, just cutting levels. So you can use the password just to jump straight to the end of the game, and... I'll eventually get there. So anyway, this is the first stage. I am I am three minutes in, or seven minutes in, because intro. Um, I may as well go over controls. Basically, here's the controls. You hit X to X to jump, square to do that, to do spin attack. That is your actual main weapon. But you can also do a double jump, which actually is supposed to ground pound, but it kind of failed. Ground pound kind of hits the area around, as you can see there. You can also hit circle, which will do that, and you can hold down triangle, which will let you do kind of that. If you ever played, um, what was it, Emperor's New Groove, you'd kind of know the controls. Because they both, both of these games are on the same engine. Um, now, I know this game too well. I found this, I found this secret out as a kid. If you're on this platform and you butt stomp three times, you jump into a secret area where you can get quite a few hearts and so hearts are your lives now basically when I got hit you might have been able to tell that it's a bit sonic inspired the crystals you gather are just like the rings they don't really serve any purpose besides just giving you an extra hit um, so anyway the hearts are lives when you die that's that's a life um, there's checkpoints I think the checkpoints are basically just rooms so when you jump into uh, a new room so to speak in game lingo, you'd call it a level, but like in, in developer lingo, you call it a level because it's technically a different stage. Um, but yeah, so you checkpoint there. Okay, so as you can tell, Croc kind of controls a bit funny. I'm when you press left and right, and thankfully this game is very nice on the digital controls, which is good for emulation. Because seriously, all those analog controllers, that's a bit annoying on a keyboard, but it plays just like it does on the PC, so it's all fine. And in fact, the PlayStation version is a bit better, and I'll get into that after I talk about controls. The controls are a bit weird. As you can tell, I'm holding left and right, but he turns. He doesn't move with the camera. You can make him strafe by holding L1 and R1, and there's probably buttons, I think, Z and X on the PC. There's a Sega Saturn version, but I literally know nothing about it besides the fact that it was probably a bit inferior because Croc, because it's the Saturn. It wasn't the best system. I think... The N64 was the best system, but the PlayStation definitely had a very good controller. I mean, seriously, the controller was so good they haven't changed it, and that's that's brilliant. Um, well, of course they've added sticks to it. Of course they need to add sticks, but they haven't really changed it. They just add like a new button in the middle or whatever. So anyway, my main hint for this game, if you want to beat it, is look at your shadow. You just need to know your shadow. Um. But yeah, also while you're running, you can do that cool flip. Like seriously, that is awesome. Um, but yeah, and that's that's the main reason why people yell at the controls because he controls like a tank. He moves forward and then he turns with the stick. Then again, Metroid Prime kind of does that, I guess. But I don't know. It's not as tanky. It's not a platform, so to speak. It's 
There's barely any platforms. Now that gong, that is the end of the stage. You just spin attack the gong and you're finished with the stage. However, if you want to go for 100%, your aim is to collect the six gobos in the stage. Um, now you may be wondering, I'm also collecting colored crystals, which I, if I hit select... No, okay, I don't know what I'm gonna hit. Uh, in order to bring up that. But as you can see, at the end of every main level, there's also a gate that requires five crystals. Now, five colored crystals. You collect the five colored crystals in the, in the stages, and at the and if you go through the gate at the end, you'll be greeted with a special bonus, which you can get a gobbo at the end of it. The gobbos are the little cute brown things. Um, so basically, you need to collect the five thingos in order to get that last gobbo for the stage. You need to collect all six gobbos in the stage in order to completely clear it. So, of course, you'll find five before, but you need to go through this gate. Now, I'll be intending to do this, but I want to play through the game for the most part. Um, I want to play through uh, most of the game, because unfortunately, getting all the gobbos will, in each set of three levels, will get you a bonus stage. And unfortunately, since we're dealing with bonus stages, I'm very entitled to doing it, uh, to playing all of that stuff, you know? Uh, but anyway, that was the first stage. So anyway, I may as well uh, talk about the structure of the levels. You pretty much just go through several rooms, and yeah, there's four worlds. Each world has six main stages, two bosses, and two secret stages if you get six gobos in each of the three main stages uh, in sets, you know? So if I get six gobos in this stage and the next stage, then I'll be able to unlock a secret level. I'm not going to be doing the secret levels until I'm done with the entire game, because if there's a secret world in the end, which is like half a world, but who cares? And still, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good value, considering you're getting how many stages? You're getting 27 main stage. No, you're getting 24 main stages. You're getting eight bosses. Then you're getting eight secret stages on top of that. So that's 32 stages. And then there's another three stages and a boss at the end. So in total, there's 35 stages and nine bosses, which is actually quite a lot. Um, now this game was, as I said, released for. Um, I, I botched this up. Hold on, I am terribly sorry. Oh, you've got to be freaking kidding me. And I didn't even show... Oh, for goodness sake. Wow, very professional of me. Hold on, I'll, 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 ju I'll just cut when I do this. <sighs> that was so professional of me to do that. And I'm at the end of the stage. Six gobos, all good. I slam my hand on the desk. Ah, so I, I unfortunately do have less lives because I wasn't bothered to go into the thing. I okay, before I start each of these stages, I need to remind you that this is the level access for this level. So, pause the video and write down that code if you want, or you can just, you know, YouTube it. Also, I'm going to be saving because I'm really... <laughs> I'm sorry. Emulator! Very fun! Why are you not saving over? Why, why is he giving me the password? I don't want the password, I want to save! Oh gosh. First of all, I will say, this is partially because... Okay, X is select. Uh, ah, okay, that overwrite. Jeez. Okay, so that's that's the progress, I guess. Um. Okay. On with the next stage. I need to start this timer, because unfortunately I have never used an iPod and the timing is weird. Doesn't keep the screen on while you're timing. That's very annoying. So anyway, um, I kind of botched this up a little bit. Um, I'm sorry for that. But, uh... What was I talking about before? Um, yeah, reviewers just didn't like this game. And it, it did sell enough, and they pretty much planned a sequel. They knew they were making a sequel. If you beat the game entirely, it says Croc will be back. And then, in uh, the second version of this game, where they made it for Windows 2000 systems, um, they, they even had a demo of the second game already, which pretty much, you know, it... What, what did the demo have? The demo had the first two stages from the second game, and, you know, two stages, that's pretty good, actually. They're very fun stages. Someone's gonna kill me, but I'm probably gonna, pe gonna play the second stage, uh, the second game, right after this. Now, you saw how, in the first level, I bounced on that guy, and, oh, sorry, I jumped in his hole afterward. 
there's a jelly in there. For the most part, you can jump in them, but, you know, just always try. Um, so anyway, yeah, they actually start getting kind of tricky, even by this second stage, where they'll literally put boxes and then put the... Don't touch lava twice, that counts as death. Thankfully, there's a heart here. But I got no crystals. And you want some crystals. Um, but yeah, they put like boxes like that. Like if I smash the first box, I won't be, I wouldn't have been able to get the other crystal. And I also skipped the crystal before. Whoops. Um. So yeah, the stages are quite difficult, and I may as well say I've never beaten the game with all the crystals. That's partially because I haven't played this game since 2006. Although I have done a lot of quite a fair amount of practice um, before this LP. Just trying to get this set up, and that, that leads me into getting the game set up. Actually, no, just before I say that, uh, crystals, I may as well say the crystals. The regular crystals, don't worry about them. For the most part, it's like a mix between Mario and Sonic. In, in Mario, if you collect 100 of the coins, you get a 1-up. But in Sonic, you can collect as many rings as you want, and you only just lose them all when you get hit. Um, so yeah, so, but at the end of the stage they accumulate, so basically it's good if you collect them all. Uh, the average of the stages usually have about 50 crystals, but it doesn't go towards anything, you don't get anything for it besides just extra lives. So yeah, I may as well just say the music is awesome, but this leads me to uh, problems. First of all, this game was released in 97. Windows 98 probably hadn't been released yet. Um, so that basically meant that this game worked on a 16-bit operating system. Uh, that's okay, except for one big problem. I currently use Windows 7 64-bit. 64-bit and 16-bit do not go together. Um, they don't go together very well. Um, since it's the first part, I'll, I'll kind of drag this on since it's the first part, since, you know... I always want to do a good impression. And may I, what, may I just say, what kind of other platformer does this? That is awesome. Seriously. So yeah. Um, but yeah, recording problems. Now, first of all, so yeah, I had problems. Thankfully, I found a nice program called VMware Player, which allows you to emulate an uh, operating system on it. And, you know, I was able to get a pre-release of Windows 8, because they just have that. This is the password for the next stage. And by the way, the stages have nice puns in their names. This is a reference to a song, I think, by someone. If you know it, good for you. Um, save. Alright. By the way, the other save is just complete save file, which is from a password, not, <laughs> not anything. And I'll play this stage just for kicks. Um, but... <sighs> But what was I saying? Um, so yeah. So I got the pre-release. Now the problem with VMware is that it doesn't record very well. You can't use Fraps on it, so but it does have an inbuilt video recording software. So you can record what's on the screen, which is actually good because you can you can even record it when it boots, which is actually very nice. Uh only problem, no sound. So I was going, oh maybe I'll just use the audio. Well actually it kind of lagged quite a fair bit. One because I was running Windows 8 inside of Windows 7. Um which kind of bad. Unfortunately, I also know this secret as well. And may I just say, the gameplay is quite self-explanatory. I don't really have to explain too many things. You know, buttons are buttons, switches are switches, balloons just fly to separate bits. And may I just say, all these secret bits, they're only for lives. Don't worry if you don't know about them, because for the most part, there's no bonus colored crystals or anything. All the colored crystals are just made instead. And oh my gosh, he's on fire! Um, so yeah. So in the end, it just kind of didn't work. I, I even tried installing Fraps in the operating system, and that didn't really work as well. So I completely abolished the idea and just decided, hmm, maybe I can try doing... Uh, and I actually tried quite a bit. Um, so I, in the end, I decided to just use PlayStation Emulator and play the PlayStation version, which is actually a little bit more superior because the PlayStation version has more songs. Did the music just stop there for a second? Huh. Oh, this is so cool, by the way. Okay. Watch what box it's in. Someone's gonna kill me if I get this wrong! Dang it! I got it wrong. 
Well, I'm, I'm going back for this stage. You guys know exactly how to get that, though. So if I get five, five gobos, then it's fine. Um, I, I'll be going back after the part's done, so don't worry. Um... Uh, what else? But yeah, the other problem with the PC version that I had is that, first of all, yeah, well, the, other, the other problem was I had problems trying to get the music to work. I had never known that this game had music. It just never played on my old computer. And I even, I found some guy who actually did post a, a good guide towards how to get the music to work. Um... Uh, it, actually, no, it wasn't really a good guide. It, it was a sigh. It was actually someone who had addressed the problem and kind of found a way to make it work for him. Uh, basically, what it was is just, like, make sure you have the actual CD in and then plug in or open up Windows Media Player and start playing the tracks. If it works out, then it should be working when you play the game. The problem was, I didn't get it to work. I had even installed someone's random game. And by the way, these are all crystals. I don't feel like getting them. Um... I, I had even like downloaded copies off the internet because I own the game. I should be a, I should be entitled to whatever the game is supposed to offer me. If it doesn't work, then I'll try f finding a way around it. Um, but you know, I just couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get the music to work. Um, and then on that same forum with the, that I was talking about before with a bunch of people, they had actually found a nice way to fix it. It involved a lot of file hacking and converting the actual files to. Uh, FLAC files, the actual audio files to FLAC files, but it ended up working. Only problem, all the audio was inverted. The state, what well, in my original game, it did play the, the music in the intro, it played the music when you cleared a stage, and I believe it also played, that was about it, pretty much, and it also played sound in the cutscenes, and there's cutscenes before bosses and stuff. But for some odd reason, after trying to fix this, it didn't play the intro music, it didn't play any of the, um... It didn't play any of the, uh... Oh, this game is so annoying. Um, but it didn't play any of the ending music. Now, I was intending to actually edit in the music, uh, post-processing. I was thinking, you know, this is better, because one, I don't have to kind of cut it every time, I only have to cut it at the end of the stages. Um, but you know, just using a PlayStation version, that pretty much solves the entire problem, because all the audio, all the audio is there. Um, all those bonus uh, music tracks, by the way, most of them are just different versions of the same uh, music, though. It's nice, it, it is all nice. Um, I believe you have to get quite a lot in order to get that gobbo. Anyway, off screen I will be getting that one gobbo that you know how to get if you've been watching. Um, so yeah, in the end, I just decided to stuff it. I'm just going to use a PlayStation version. It'll be a bunch easier. And here I am now, using the PlayStation version. So I guess that'll be a part. Here is the password. I think the password may change if I get um, that gobbo. So as I said, I won't be doing the special stages until I'm done with the entire game, so don't worry. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be... Actually, do worry, partially. But I will be I will be playing them. You need to play them in order to get to the last world, anyway. Okay, I'll see you kids then. Woo!